Good morning, Codas. Welcome, welcome to today's session. Thank you for joining us and thank you for um, accepting the call to join us uh, to this amazing program. And uh, my name is Joan Nabosoba from Pony Techno Girls. I'm the Professional Development Director at Pony Techno Girls. And at the same time, I am a software developer. I create uh, softwares in both web and mobile. So that's my career and that's my specialty. I want to welcome you guys in the meeting today. And uh, I can see we are uh, in good numbers. So most welcome as we are starting the coding session today. And I just, before we start, of course, I know many of you have questions in terms of what this program is about, what uh, is entailed and what is required of you. So uh, I'm going to just answer that in a short while. So most welcome. Just uh, try and ensure that you are on mute. In case you have any questions, just raise your hand. I'll attend to that. But you're welcoming as many questions as possible as we are beginning. So, karibuni sana tena. So, just to mention, uh, CODAS at American Species Kenya is a program that is uh, that is in, implemented by Pony Techno Girls, and it is a program by the American Embassy Kenya. That's what to mention. So this program aims, you know, software development is really becoming expensive because people are paying a lot of money uh, to attend uh, or to just access this information. So the Codas at American Spaces program aims at making this, uh, you acquiring these skills free. So. That's why we've partnered with them and we are giving out these skills for free to enable you guys to, to learn software development and even in the process create projects that are uh, projects that are sustainable to solve your community problems. So that's the aim of this program. So let me just share my screen so that you can have a look at uh, the URL and I'm going to share that URL as well. Fantastic. So the, this program, Codas at American Spaces Kenya, let me just post that in the chat box so that you can have an idea of what uh, this program is also about. And then you can just have a look at it. I'll, I'll still post in the comment box and uh, even in your WhatsApp groups. So don't worry, just watch out for that. So uh, the program is called, of course, Codas at American Spaces, and it's by the US Embassy in Kenya with Pony Techno Girls to uh, equip you guys with skills in coding, coding skills. And uh, when we were giving you the form, we were asking you to choose between web development, mobile development. You guys went for web development, which is amazing as well. There's no technology which is superior than the other. Every, every technology is useful in terms of uh, you creating solutions. So uh, this is a free program. You are not supposed to, okay, no one should ask you for money if you're coming to join this program. It's for free for you to acquire these skills. So after you acquire these skills, we are going to create a, what I can say is a competition, some sort of competition in a way that individually based on the skills that you've created, you're going to challenge yourself and create a project around the areas of health, economy, democracy, and security. And then those who are winners will be given a prize. That is a technology prize. So watch out for that as we go along. So just um, as we are progressing as well, we are going to ensure that we train you as much as possible. I want to assure you that we are a very supportive team. I don't work alone. I, we have a team, of course, we have our executive director in absentia and our deputy as well. Uh, we have Ms. Ruth Kaveke, the executive director, Madam Aisha, who's uh, the deputy director. We also have our amazing facilitator called Mr. Brighton, always supporting you, uh, supporting the program as well. So watch out for that because you might be able to see uh, in case you need help, in case you're stuck, even with your projects. 
we always join hands and support. So another thing worth mentioning is um, airtime will be there, but it will be given to a team of a group who are working on their project. So it's when you show some dedication towards working on your project, the embassy will, uh, will seclude some budget for you to be able to receive airtime. But until then, we are making our programs as flexible as possible. How so? We are only meeting once a week. So you just join the meeting, meet once a week, learn the skills to give you resources, work on it. We meet again next week. Another thing is as you're creating on your own, you can create your projects offline based on these skills to just make sure that you acquire as much as possible. So in the process, as you're going towards a project development phase, when we see that you guys are working on your projects right away, you will receive some airtime support. So I hope that is clear for you guys. And I am super excited to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for creating time. This is a very impactful project pro program. How? Because number one, you will participate in creating a, a project that will solve a community problem. We will go through the ideation phase. You create a project that solves a community problem in your local community. So. Uh, that is one thing that, I mean, as Kenyans or as even uh, people in this world, we should focus on creating such solutions. Secondly, secondly, it can even be something that you can put as a career goal because once you acquire these skills, you have acquired. So you have to, you will indicate in your CV that you participated in this program by the uh, US Embassy Kenya and Pony Techno Girls and acquired these skills. You've upped your CV. You are in a better place than someone who's not doing anything at all. And once you continue working on your projects, we will make sure that we give you recommendations when you ask for them. So that's one thing worth mentioning. Another thing is by creating a community problem, we've seen really successful projects. Like we have been able to see young women from our programs getting funding to continue working on their projects and even creating employment all along. So you can come here with an aim of uh, creating a project that creates employment to other people. We will walk you through and support you as much as possible and give you as many resources as possible. So thank you again, guys, for joining because we know that you have that heart or you have that uh, innovative, innovative spirit in you. And we're just here as facilitators to enable you to just journey through and uh, work on your projects and make sure that you realize your goals and dreams. It does not matter which career path you're choosing. Technology is vital in every field. Great. So I'm going to welcome questions before I begin. Any question, you can you can raise your hand or you can uh, unmute and ask, or you can just type in the chat box. Jemima, Jemima, kindly go ahead and ask the question. You, uh, I have a question. Yes, please. So you said we'll be having uh, meetings like once a week. Yes. Is there a specific day, like a, a day of a, a, a day in the week, like maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday that we have in the meet, or it will just be a, a random day? No, it is always at this time, uh, Tuesday, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Okay. Yes, it will always be Tuesday. Thank you for that question. Okay. Thank you, Jemima. Now we have a very important question from Yvonne. How long will the program last? It's not going to last long, actually. Uh, we, it's going to last, uh, it's going to end in September, but your coding phase is going to end in July. So you're going to acquire these skills in May and then June, we support you to start coding. And then July, you, start, you submit the program or the project for judging. Now, as you're submitting the program and as you're working to, uh, as you're submitting the program and waiting for uh, the judging and so on, uh, what happens or what will happen is 
we are going to introduce you to an, um, another amazing program that is of course optional to you, but we feel that it's really important in a way that you, it is, uh, it's called the 21st C Skills uh, platform whereby you can acquire artificial intelligence uh, certification. Uh, and then we also have a data science certification and software development in Python certification. So you acquire these uh, skills for free as well, but it's a self-paced learning prog uh, program. So if you, uh, it's optional, if you manage to create time and start learning with uh, this program and acquire these skills, you will be given certification, you'll have experience and be given certification there. So we give you that as we are waiting for the judges and then from there, we will, we will call a final closing program and you will be given certification as well for the coder, for participating as a coders at American Spaces Kenya, a certification as a proof of recommendation for you to participate in this program. Great. So Lisa, thank you. I see you're looking forward. I look forward to really interact with, uh, interacting with you. So uh, Harriet, thank you as well. So. Sharon, you're asking, what about campus students who might get, have classes on Tuesdays? Uh, is there a penalty? Uh, no, Sharon. Sharon, in case you are tied up and you have classes on Tuesday, this session is recorded. So if, if, you, really, uh, if you really are eager to learn, you will, you will, we will send this recording to you. We always send this recording immediately after it has built. Of course, Zoom takes some time to compile the recording. We send the recording immediately. And then you can take your time and look through the recording and try out what people are learning. And then based on that, you can just uh, ask us any questions in case you are stuck. So Sharon, there is no penalty. Then Yvonne, will we receive certification from this program? Yes, upon meeting the requirements of this program. And the requirements is just making sure that you have participated as much as possible. Not, I'm not saying that sometimes you might be held up because I know most of you are university students. I am there too, I was there too, and I'm still there right now. So based on that, we understand in case you're stuck, you can just let me know that uh, it's good that most of you have informed me, you guys are still in the university, I am stuck, and we consider that and we record this session. So after maybe you've, you're done with your work, you can come, have a look at the recording, fast forward to the areas that you feel is important to you and learn. And then we will walk you through the project development phase whereby you'll come up with the ideas in the areas of health, economy, democracy, and security. And make sure that your idea is really, let me call in quotes, palatable <laughs> in terms of the society can accept that idea. And then based on that, you create prototypes. We don't need working powerful projects, prototypes. And then uh, after the program, you can continue implementing this program. But you yes, you will get certification out of this program. Then uh, what are the other channels to reach out in case you need support other than email? We have a WhatsApp group. We have a WhatsApp group. I'm going to share in the chat uh, the link. Please, please, please join the group. Yeah, we will be able, it's not very noisy. The group is not very noisy, by the way. Uh, the people that are in the group are very uh, calm and they can be able to share. So at that point, as I'm saying, uh, as I emphasize about the group, be your sisters or your brother's keeper. Just be as friendly as possible to each other and let's do this. I believe we can do this together. I've even see, seen people partnering in the previous program. This program can allow a, at least a group of three, three participants to create the same project program. I mean, to create the same project during the project phase and each of you will get a certificate. So if you want to work alone, you can work alone. If you want to work together, you can work as, but maximum of three. So in case you're in the same university or you're coming from the same area, you can partner. And then you will still all get individual certification. Then, uh, so I hope I've answered your question, Leah. I'm going to share the link to the, to the in the. I'm I'm going to share the link in the chat. Then Jade, you're saying I believe it's recorded, so students who might be having classes will still have information. Thank you, Jade. That's really true, and thank you for supporting the program. Then Lisa, you're asking are there specific requirements? The requirement is are you 
ready to learn or to spark your creativity in coding? If that's if the answer is yes, then you're most welcome. Yet there isn't you are we aren't strict in with the requirements. Then you're asking uh, Sharon, are there job opportunities maybe when one emerges good? Um, that's a tricky question, Sharon. Uh, we have seen opportunities uh, that have been shared and then we share with you. So if you are within our networks, the opportunities that come, we share with you. But let me just mention, when we are developing or when we are coding uh, in this uh, program or when you're creating solutions in this program, We've seen people even uh, applying for grants and getting opportunities just even after this program. Why? Because it gives you an upper, an upper hand. Because we've seen, like in the previous program, there was one lady who, after a, one, of, one of these programs, after she participated, created a prototype. I, know, I don't know if you guys know IBM. It is one of the major tech companies. Uh, just by saying that she participated in in this program and created a solution to solve the local community problem, things like that, she was able, she was able to get this employment, to get an upper hand, rather than those who have just graduated, gotten, you are giving yourself an upper hand. So when opportunities emerge, Sharon, trust me, you will be the first people we share with. Great. So Daisy, you're asking what language will we be using? So first of all, we are starting with a, a HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap for you to be able to prototype. But if you are not a novice, I know some of you here are computer scientists, you're not novices, you are experts. We will ask you to develop your solution in that language that you want to develop. We are not restricting you to a particular language. Why are we starting with HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap? It's because most people who are joining this program are novices. They have no idea in, in creating the project. So if we are going to send out a survey form in which we are going to determine your experience, your experience in uh, coding, your coding experience. So based on that, we will be able to to advise on the best way you're going to move forward and implement these solutions. Just to reiterate, it does not matter how far you've created your solution. What matters is how your idea is coming up, how you will bring out your idea and pitch it very well. So Harry, to asking, please, is there a module syllabus for the program? Yes, I'm gonna share in a short while. Leah, thank you very much. And then Jade, you're asking, will we ever meet in person? Absolutely. If you are within, okay, we were planning for in-person meetings in the regions, but then COVID happens, happened. And then in fact, even some of our team got infected and sick. So we were like, okay, let's make it virtual for now. But when everything uh, gets well and uh, everything goes as planned, we can uh, meet in person and we can even uh, tell you guys which location you can come. We were really uh, happy when we meet people in person, but unfortunately, the pandemic, that is the major problem. And that's why this program is virtual. So um, Aisha Musa, you're saying, are we starting with the basics? Like, are we assuming that we, we do not know anything about the web development? Yes, yes. But if you do, there are some people here who are experts. If you do, please make sure that you answer the survey question so that we make sure that we attend to you in the best way possible. Okay. Then Brenda, what happens in the event that someone lacks bundles in one of the Tuesdays? Hmm. I think I'll pass the message to, uh, uh, to our team. We discuss that, we see the best way forward. But in case you don't have uh, bundles, you can just let me know in case maybe you are stuck because we are uh, we are a very supportive team and uh, as an organization as well we we also earn and profit and stuff like that but we also make do our best to make sure that you guys have uh, have what it takes or have the best so we are really happy that you guys have been able to join us and please if there is any challenge reach out to me there is also a lady in the group called uh, Shamim, Shamim Matunda. 
she's also one of the ladies who can assist you with communication and in case you have any problem and she can always reach out to our team so that's just worth mentioning just reach out to us in case you have any problem we are a very supportive team i'll still insist that great fantastic so let me see if there is there are more questions i think there are will python be incorporated in this yes there is a python group and um, yes we'll incorporate python in this and i think because we are just starting and most of the people here are novice or they're beginners we will make sure that we send you the resources so uh, python we have what, what i can say we have packaged uh, classes we have packaged uh, sessions in python we can share this and if we share this with you please take some time the facilitator of python is one of the facilitators in this meeting and she he he is a gentleman he, he is always very willing to support you guys, to support you guys in coding. So if you really still are interested in Python, there is two ways. One, we will share with you the resources to get the Python uh, classes and just do it at your own pace and even remind you uh, on how to do it. Second, if, if, uh, if let's say you still want to they get a certification in Python. We have the 21st C Skills, which is a self-paced learning platform for free. Yeah, the, for Pony Techno Girls group, it's for free. But for others, they, will, they are paying for it. So if you want to gain these skills, we'll make sure that you have been able to acquire this, uh, to, you have been able to enroll in the 21st C Skills for free. And then you can learn when you are done with the course, we will ensure that you get that certification and the experience in the Python field. Yes. So um, Jade, you're saying, is this only a ladies team? I mean, if I'm wrong, I've seen most girls. No, Jade, we are not an only ladies team. Let me tell you, Jade, in women empowerment, we have received humorous support from gentlemen as well so no 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 this is not an only ladies team you will be able to see other gentlemen in the team also if you have a friend who is a gentleman before the program goes deep just welcome them and uh, we will be able to make sure that you get as much as possible from this program so isabel thank you so much as well please reach out to us so I know some of you might be experienced in coding. Let me just share my screen again. Mm -hmm. uh, sheets, Google Sheets, Google Slides, yeah. So I know some of you might be experienced in coding. Please let us know in advance so that we can see on the best way we are going to share with you these resources. Uh, we, 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 we really don't assume we really don't assume that you have experience, then uh, uh, that you, you are all novices. Then hurry to asking, please, will we have a Google Classroom platform too? Hmm. Actually, no, not really, but we'll be sending resources on WhatsApp and on email. We will be sending resources on WhatsApp and on email in case you feel that WhatsApp is something that you can access your information faster or email is something you can access your information faster. Great. Oh, thank you, Harriet. I'm happy that is good. So um, there are some of your sisters and brothers who are going to, uh, to see this live. So I'm just going to hit the live button on our, on our session uh, on Facebook uh, because there are some who want to join live from Facebook. They prefer that rather than Zoom. So I'm going to hit that live button. Great. Most welcome again, guys. So Belinda asking at the end of class, will we be able to be software developers? Yes, it depends with how you are dedicated to learn. Yes, you will be software developers. And then how are resources 
for learning going to be shared. I, I, as I said, Cynthia, we're going to share the resources on WhatsApp and on email so that you can have access to these resources. But most welcome, guys. We can now begin the session. And then, uh, oh, Belinda, you're asking at the end of this class. No, 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 not at the end of this class. We can, you can be software developers at the end of one session. At least you have to build your traction as we go along to be, uh, to be able to learn or grasp as much as possible. Great. So um, let me share my screen just a minute before I share. Great, great. So I'm going to introduce you to the concepts of web, uh, web development. And then, of course, I'm going to mention the languages that are there. And in case if there is something familiar that you know, uh, please let us know. So as you're going to, to introduce uh, the web HTML and CSS, I just would like to maybe trigger you with a bit of uh, with some questions. OK, for example, I want to just ask based on, um, let's say, based on the program or based on uh, you, what you guys have been uh, able to interact, maybe in the universities or maybe also in whichever places you might have learned this. So let me know how many know how to use or how to code uh, in the web in any language. How many do know how to code in the web? Let me know even in the comments. Oh, the class is going to just, we are going to just last for one hour, 10 minutes. So Karen, you're saying you don't know. Belinda, yes, that's great. Then uh, I can see uh, Moana's, yeah. Let me, okay, the comments are coming in very fast. I love that. So Suleiman, Mwana, Mwana City, Suleiman, you don't know, Sharon, uh, hey, Maureen, you know the basics of HTML, that's great. Then uh, I, I can see a lot of people uh, don't know, but we have some who do. I, I also have no idea. Oh, that's great. That's why we are here. Oh, great. Then we have Daisy, you do. A little HTML, wow. Then we have, I don't, I don't know. I know the basics of HTML and CSS. Wow, ladies, thank you for that quick feedback. Most of you from the comments have no idea or you don't know the basics of web development. That is okay. Then some of you know a little bit of HTML and CSS. Some of you know the basics and some of you are, uh, some of you do know. So that's why I'm, uh, we have the survey form. Yeah, that's why you have the survey form and you'll be able to learn a lot from the program. Oh, and then we have that uh, our amazing uh, co-facilitator, Shamim. If you see her comment, just uh, read it out and thumbs it up because she is one of our team and a very informational young lady. And even at the end of the program, she will get to say hi to you guys and so that you can get to know her. Fantastic. So um, that's awesome. So. Uh, in the program, in the program, we are going to learn uh, basics of uh, uh, web. We are going to learn HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap, and then we are going to share with you resources, especially those who are uh, no novices. We are going to share with you resources uh, for you to be able to acquire these skills. In and then, based on this, you can just work through your program and make sure that you are able to acquire uh, as much as possible and even be software developers in the process. Great. So thank you for that informative feedback. As I can see, uh, most of you are eager to learn and we can get started. So I think there was a cross in the pen there. Let me just remove that. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, let me stop share and share again. I don't know how to remove that for now. Fantastic. 
Oh, great. Fantastic. So let's get started. Let's get started. So we have, or oh, let me, uh, we have, uh, we are going to learn about HTML, uh, CSS, and Bootstrap, and then of course we are going to share more resources if you would like like to gain as much as possible. You might be a beginner and then you gain skills in web, HTML, uh, and CSS and Bootstrap, and then after it all you still want to grow your skills. We are here for you. So. What is the what is HTML, CSS, and what is the web in general? Before we dive into coding, we have to understand how the basic internet works. And it's very simple. I know most of us just, uh, when we go to the internet, we browse, we get our notes, we, we get to post our content on social media, we do as much as possible in the internet. And um, what really goes on behind the scenes? What really goes on behind the scenes? Of course, there is nothing like the like a cloud somewhere where our data is stored. I know we always refer to our data as being stored in the cloud, but that cloud is just another computer somewhere. So, such such computers is where you can get access to information. So you connect uh, over a network, and then in that network that you've connected, you can be able to access information from another computer. So that's how basically the internet works. There is a computer accessing information from another computer through an, a network. So each computer, like even your phone, has a unique address so that we can have a, some order in the internet. We call them protocols in the internet. We can have some law and order in the internet so that someone does not easily hack you. Of course, we have those issues. So every computer has a unique address for, uh, for it to be able to communicate across the internet. So these are the terms that we associate with the internet. We have the domain, because when we learn about web development, we cannot, uh, we cannot really uh, forget about the word domain. Domain is part of web development. What is a domain? So a domain is that unique ad address or a unique URL. For example, we have pwanitechnogirls.org. That is a domain. We also have facebook.com. When you tap on the browser, that is a domain. You, when you click on that facebook.com, you won't go to any other, you, it won't show you any other thing other than the contents of Facebook. So that is unique to Facebook. So uh, even let's say on YouTube or even on TikTok, that is a unique address to that business. So that is a domain. And as web developers, as we are progressing, you find out that there are people who want to create websites or there are people who want to create web applications. You will have to secure for them a unique address we call domain. We are going to show you as we go along with the course. So another term that we can, you can encounter is what we call a browser. So a browser is just a piece of software, of course, an application package in which you can be able to go to the internet. Yeah, so I know most of you know browsers like eh, Mozilla, most of you know the you know, Internet Explorer, most of you know Google Chrome and so many and so many other browsers. So with these browsers, you can be able to go to the internet. Okay, other than that, of course, you can be able to access the internet using a mobile application. Then we have another term called, we called hypertext transfer protocol. As I was saying, there are rules. You just can't transfer data in the web like that. Behind the scenes, there are rules that govern this transfer. So we call those rules hypertext transfer protocol. And maybe you can share more resources if you are interested to, uh, to just, uh, for curiosity purposes, we will share these uh, more resources. Then we have another term we call a URL. Of course, a URL, we've looked at it uh, in this uh, domain, okay? A URL is now that address. It's that, now that address that you are going to uh, access a particular file or access a particular uh, website across the internet or in the World Wide Web. Another term, of course, is that World Wide Web. World Wide Web is, an, a, of course, interconnected systems of public web pages that you can access. 
Okay. So these are terms that we associate ourselves with when we think about the internet. It's really important before we dive into coding, you familiarize yourself with these terms because you're going to interact with them as much as possible. Great. Now, so what is then, what then is a website? We've, we've been speaking about World Wide Web domains and stuff like that. And the, I mean, unique addresses, then what is a website? So websites, these are just documents, documents in, in form of web pages. And these documents, they are placed somewhere in a server in which you can be able to uh, link them to a unique address. So when someone goes to that address, they access these documents. It's as simple as that. That is what a website basically is. And it gives you an identity in the web. So having to think about that, this is now a question I'm posing to you, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think is the importance of having a website? Just let us know in the chat. What do you think is the importance of us having a website or you having a website? Uh, just intrigue us in the chat. It's an open question. No answer is wrong, so as to say. So what do you think is the importance of having a website? Why should a business have a website? Why should you have a website? So there is for advertising, yes. Yes, Mona City, it's for advertising. You can advertise your program, uh, pro, uh, you can advertise your stuff on the, on the website. How do you have to make your product, to market your product? Absolutely. You can have a website to market your product because if, uh, of course, people would want to have more information. Yes. Then we have Sharon. Sharon is saying it gives an online presence for yourself and for the business. Absolutely correct. Online presence is really important because when someone even Googles your name, they can be able to see, even if right now you go Google my name, Joanne Nabusoba, you'll be able to see results that you will quickly uh, be able to know what I do. So you, yes, it gives you that online presence and people can be able to access you and your business. Then for sharing information, yes, you might have a particular information that you want people to access. You can share that information. Correct, Isabel. Then Elizabeth, to promote your product. Very true, you can promote your product with a website. Maureen, you're saying it's important to have it so that, uh, so to give in, to have information on your business make it reachable, absolutely. Because sometimes when someone is selling a product, you want to investigate more about their web website or their business, you cannot see it. You cannot trust such a business. No business, nowadays, if a, if a business does not have a website, most people just go, no, no, okay? So it's a really important skill for us to acquire. Then Brenda for online presence, correct, Shiro? Marketing and promoting products, absolutely true. Then to make your product known, absolutely. Valerie, yes, you can make your product known by having a website. Then to search for information, absolutely faith. You make your information available for people to access. Then for marketing purposes, Anita, yes, that is correct. To have an online store like Jumia, Yvonne, Yvonne you're saying that that's very true because in websites, you can create an e-commerce site to have that. That is very true. Then uh, Mona City, to help you build a brand. Yes, you can build a brand by having a website and uh, people can identify you and your products with that brand. Then it tells more about your business, Bahia. Very true, very true, Bahia. It tells more about your business. Then for ease of access of information, you can compile your website in a way that people can easily access your information. Then Sharon, you're saying having a portfolio for reference to clients. Very true. Yeah, like most of us I know uh, have portfolio websites. So you can have a look. Uh, when someone have, has a look at them, they can be able to know, wow, this person works on this. Let me refer them to clients. Then we have uh, Christabel. It gives you an identity and tells more about you on a click of a button. We have, it gives clear view of the business of the organization for wider reach uh, to know, eh, hey, wow, this, these are really amazing answers. I, wow, to, to know who you, who, who your competence are. That is from Anita, yes. Very true, you can be able to, to identify your competition that way. 
and even to know how competent you are, to tell people how competent you are. Then uh, it shows professionalism here, very true. And then to create trust with buyers and to create more sales and then uh, storage of information for yourself and your clients, and then it's long lasting. That is Jade, Valerie, Kia. Thank you guys for those amazing feedback. You are all correct. You've given even more than uh, what I had in mind <laughs> to share with you. So this is very true, guys. So with this, by having a website, you will be able to create that online presence, uh, create, build a brand, build trust in a way that people can, and it's also a skill. Is also a skill. Many businesses are coming up. They need websites. So you are becoming a web developer. You are becoming a web developer and we can be able, I, I mean, by you acquiring these skills, you have an upper hand in terms of a coding or in terms of web development. So, yes. So tools for creating websites, tools for creating websites. So there are so many tools, of course, for creating websites. And uh, what you're going to use in this, um, in this tool or in these sessions, we're going to use, of course, our browsers, because that's where our websites run. Our websites run in the browser. When you type the website code, you run in the browser. And then we have the version control of the Git command line. We are going to use GitHub. It's really important for you to have to learn about GitHub and even create what we call GitHub pages. And this is really exciting in us because when you create a website, a portfolio website and host it in GitHub pages, you have a portfolio already and that is there to stay for free. So you create a static website and host it in GitHub pages to show what you can do and really showcase what you can do. Then we have the text editor. We are going to use Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code, the one that you prefer. But uh, on my end, I prefer Sublime Text. And there are some of you who prefer Visual Studio Code. You still have similar experience. And then we have the browser developer tools. We have Chrome or Firefox. Of course, uh, developer tools. I'm going to show you what these developer tools are. Then you can use the image manipulation software of your choice. Uh, I know some of you have Adobe Photoshop but uh, there are so many that you can use. There are also some which are free or even just the normal paint. Great. So having said that, we are going to now start with HTML. Before I begin, any questions so far? Any question? Great. Oh, I can see a question. Let me access the comments. Oh, Mana City. Yes, uh, I'm glad you love the session. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for always making time to join in and uh, uh, learn from this session. Great. So, Noor, you're saying, uh, Noor Swale, you're saying the connection was bad, really sorry about that. But don't worry, this, connect, this meeting is recorded. We will be able to share with you the recording. So don't even worry at all. Don't worry at all. So, oh, great. So let me check if there are any questions on the web. No, oh, great. Fantastic. Now, let's now dive into what HTML is and even just start working a little bit with HTML and then I'll leave you to go. I'll leave you to go and even try this out on your own. Okay, so what is HTML? What is HTML? So HTML, of course, in full is called hypertext, hypertext markup language. And it's one that is widely used. Even when you go to, let's say, facebook.com, some HTML has been used to create the website. Even when you go to Twitter, you find that there is some HTML that has been used, of course, to create this. So HTML is one of the languages that is widely used. 
to create web pages. Other than HTML, of course, we have XML, which I don't see many people using it. Of course, they are, they are used a lot, but not many people using it. You are using it as much as HTML. Okay. So hypertext, what does hypertext mean? So it refers to the way in which web pages or that HTML documents, you link them together. What do we mean? When you go, for example, let me just open the Pwani Techno Girls website. That is uh, this organization's main website. So in this website, you, you're able to see that there is that homepage in which it showcases for you uh, details about the, our project uh, and things like that, what we do. And then we have about us. That is a different page. We have about us. So you are hypertext. You are connecting multiple pages together. You are connecting multiple pages together. So that is what hypertext is about. Then other than that, we have what we call markup language. So markup language, it means you use HTML to simply mark up the text in the document. So when you are typing a text in HTML, you're able to type it in a unique way, in a way that the browser can be able to know that this is HTML and this is not HTML. So it is a markup language. Okay. Yes, Sharon, you'll get the entire recording. Don't worry, we'll get, we'll share the entire recording. Great. Now, having learned, having know, knowing what HTML is, okay? Having know what HTML is, there is the reason why you can uh, why it is important for you to learn html html is actually very easy in the next session we will make sure that we have completed and finished html and even start on the css because html is very easy to understand and it's very easy to complete and like the learning curve is so uh, it's not very steep it's just gentle so by you learning html you can be able to create websites you can be able to become a web designer. You can understand about the web. Of course, as we are doing, you'll be able to understand about the web by you just creating, a, uh, learning about HTML. You can be able to know other languages that are out there. You can be able to know, uh, to even exp uh, integrate it with as many languages as possible out there. So that is why you should learn HTML. And then uh, to learn other languages. Of course, HTML is the base. You can't create a website using HTML alone. Let me break that, uh, bust that bubble. You cannot create a website using HTML alone, but you can create a website uh, uh, with HTML and integrate other technologies like JavaScript, like PHP, like Angular, and Python. You can integrate this in your website so that you can be able to create even web applications. And then just worth mentioning, we can, we will, we are going to even share with you. For those who are interested, of course, we are, we are going to share as much as possible. There's also interested in learning Python, and we're also going to share with you uh, those who are interested in learning WordPress, so that you can be able to have a look at it and uh, look at how you can create uh, WordPress websites using free themes and premium themes and uh, stuff like that. So we are here to give you as much information as possible. Great. So uh, after that, we are going to now uh, to now try the HTML. So before we dive in and try the HTML, I can see we have uh, we have how many minutes remaining? We have about uh, fifteen minutes remaining to the end of this session before I welcome questions. So this is what you do if you are going if you are a beginner in HTML and you are just starting and uh, creating a HTML website. So this is what you do. You come to the, you come to your browser, okay, to Google, and then you download Sublime Text. Of course, there is that, that other editor, Sublime Text. Just Google Sublime Text. There is that other editor, Visual Studio Code. You can download it as well. I still, I have bots. So you'll be able to see www.sublimetext.com. Then click on it. Okay, click on it. And then when you click on it, you can, depending on the operating system that you are in, you can download it for Windows. And uh, this is free, but of course there is that buy section in which you can be able to support them. It's, it's for free, but if you want to promote them, you can, it, you can promote them, 
okay? So this is free to use to get all the features in this and uh, you can download it. So you click on the download for Windows. So when you download it, you can, uh, you can be able to install. It's very small, by the way. It does not consume a lot of bundles. It's only 10 MBs. That is even uh, like, the, uh, like the videos that you watch on, on let's say TikTok or even on, on WhatsApp, on WhatsApp statuses. So it's a very small video, you just buy a, it's a, a very small package. So it's just 10 MBs, you download it and install. So this is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. Let me just, uh, I know that I was working on something. So let me just open, uh, uh, let me share that uh, the exact window of how it looks like. So, mm -hmm. so let me stop sharing this and then I share the exact uh, instance. Fantastic. So, mm -hmm. yes, this is how Sublime Text, Sublime Text looks like. Okay, this is how Sublime Text looks like. After you've installed everything, you'll be able to see something like this. Of course, you won't be able to see uh, something including uh, these folders because we are we were creating something and learning with the others. Uh, but this is exactly what you're going to see is a really nice editor that you are going to see. So when you install Sublime Text, you can get started. And then some point of reference, we are going to also learn using the, I'm going to show you a resource in which is the best if you are starting about HTML and you push yourself and learn about it, you can be able to know what, uh, I mean, you can be able to learn how to code very well in HTML. One of my, one, uh, one of my go-to websites that I really like, one of my go-to websites that I really like is called uh, W3Schools. Uh, let me share that as well before we start what, uh, we start coding a little in HTML. So, uh -huh. so W3Schools has really, uh, let me cancel this. Yeah, W3 schools has really grown most of us. Like we are where we are because of W3 schools. So let me just type. I know most of you are familiar with that. And uh, yeah, so you can learn about HTML here, but we are going to take you through. And then in case, in case of anything, you can try this out on your own. So, so can we at least, uh, any question maybe before we uh, any question maybe before we 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 write something small and then I'll leave you to go any question great great so uh so what what I advise you to do is when you download now and install the sublime text come and open it, okay? Come and open it and this is where you can start your HTML. So one thing you need to know about HTML is you are going to save this file as a .html file. You are supposed to save it as a .html file because when you save it as a .html file, when you run it in the browser, the browser will be able to rec recognize that this is, a, this is the website or this is a website you're going to create a website. So Isabel, you're asking, is it possible to get links to the website you've mentioned in the session? Yes. Yes, you're going to. Uh, we are going to share with you the resources or the link to that website. And then uh, Catherine, you're saying they have net, you just joined. We will share the recording, Catherine. We will share the recording. Don't even worry at all. We share the recording so that you can have, you can go through uh, after this session, but welcome most welcome and join us. Great. And then, uh, so can we kindly now begin with, we at least uh, do a little bit of HTML. We know what HTML is. So before the next session, uh, before we, we have the entire week, kindly make sure that you try this out. It's very simple. And yes, we'll share the websites and everything on WhatsApp. Don't worry. We'll share on WhatsApp, on email as well. 
great. So um, having said that, having said that, let us try out and see how you can code in HTML. Let's see how you can code in HTML. So, okay, let me just share my entire screen. Great. So uh, let me come back to my slides. We have uh, 10 minutes remaining. So how do you code in HTML? It's very simple. So you are basically coding in HTML. There is one thing that I really want you to familiarize yourself is and it's what we call tags or HTML tags. And these are tags that are in angle braces, yeah, in angle braces or angle brackets so as to say. So with these tags, you can be able to create or create code, HTML code. So in HTML, most tags, let me say most tags, most tags have an opening tag and a closing tag. There are some which are what we call self-closing tag, which are only two or three, but most of them have opening tag and a closing tag. What do I mean? There is a tag in HTML that opens everything. It's called HTML. In that HTML, when you open the HTML tag, you are supposed to close that HTML tag. I'm just going to show you how you are going to close that in a short while. So how do you start coding in HTML? So let me just uh, open the sublime text. And this is how you start coding in HTML. Let me enlarge my screen. Yes. So before I start, I think there is a question or I don't know. Let me have a look at that. Yes. Okay. So after, uh, okay. So this is how you start coding in HTML. So there is this tag we call doc type. So you type like that, doc type, then HTML, like that. Angle brackets alone. So this, of course, is a self-closing tag, doc type HTML. So you're telling your browsers that the document I am creating is, is a HTML document, doc type HTML. You're telling the browser, the document I am creating is a HTML document, okay? Great. Now, after you've done that, that's when you come now and open the HTML tag. So how do you open the HTML tag? You put the angle bracket there, angle bracket that faces on the left, okay? And then write HTML like that, and then close. So you've written, you've opened the HTML tag. The moment you open this tag, you have to close it fast. So you press enter, of course, and close it like that. HTML, okay? So I've opened HTML. So how do you close? You, you include this forward slash there in the tag. So it means that you have closed that tag, okay? So the HTML is the entrance point. Sorry about that, guys. I think uh, there was a network problem. Can you now hear me? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So, the electricity disappeared, blinked for a while and everything got disconnected, but uh, welcome back. Oh, great. Awesome, let me share my screen again. Thank you for your patience in waiting. Oh, great. So I was saying you open the HTML tag like that, okay? So inside the HTML, this is where now everything happens. So uh, inside the HTML, we, want, we have another tag. Let me just press enter a little bit so that we can be able to know. So HTML is the mother of every tags there. HTML is the mother of every HTML tag that you're going to place inside. And there are a couple of tags. So inside the HTML, I can press 
I can press the tab so that it indents inside so that you know that ah, this is a child of the entire HTML document. So inside the HTML, you can, uh, there is a tag that we call head like that, head like that. And then after that head, you close the head. It's very important that when you're typing your HTML code, you are able to open it and close it. When you open it, make sure that you close it. So uh, Isabel, you're saying is restart. So let me let me explain again. So after you've typed doc type, okay, the main tag that you are supposed to start with is HTML like that. So this way you have opened the HTML tag. How do you close it? You close it by uh, writing the same, but you put a forward slash like that so that you have HTML like that. So there is the opening tag of HTML, which is this one. And then you close it like that, okay? Yeah, so after you've done that, you come to uh, inside now the HTML. Inside the HTML, you can press a tab like that so that we know that hmm, this one is the child of this. So inside HTML, we have another tag we call head, okay, head. Head, you open the head tag like that and then close it. The moment you create HTML tags, make sure that you close those tags. So that's how you open the head tag and this is how you close the head tag. So after you've opened the tag and closed the tag, you come inside head and then inside head. Head is where, head is where you place uh, things to do with title. We have what we call meta tags. We are going to make sure that you learn this as much as possible uh, as we are progressing, okay? We, you will know what meta tags are. You'll know even uh, here is where you link your custom CSS and things like that. So inside that head, okay? What you're going to just use to do today is title. And title is like a title of the website. So a title I can say, my first site. And then close that title like that. Be very careful with the tags. Let me just repeat that uh, in a short while. So we have title like that. Then let's close it first. Title like that. Yes, like that. And then inside that title, you can type my first site. We are going to see where that title is. So this head, this is the section where it's not really visible inside the HTML. Uh, inside the HTML document. It's only visible at the top. At the top there, what do I mean? We are going to run this and be able to see. When you come here, as you can see, there is that W3 schools. You are able to see there is W3 schools online. There at the top, that cut text that shows, it indicates that you are on that tab. That is where the title appears. Even Ponytechnogas, you are able to see mission Ponytechnogas there at the top. That is where title appears when you write title like that. So after we are done with the head, come outside the head after the closing tag of the head and then press enter. And then we are going to put body like that. So of course, as we said, after mefungua, funga. Close the body tag like that. Then inside the body tag, we have other elements or other what we call HTML elements. So I'm only going to show you two because we are out of time and then we will discuss more in our next session. So inside the body tag, we have a, so many tags. We have so many tags, but today I'm just going to show you for the two for the purposes of running this and be able to see how a website or how you can get started with a website. So the body, we have what you call H1, mean indicating heading one. So you open the H1 tag like that and close it like that. Then inside between those tags, you can say heading one, or you can say uh, the first heading like that, the first heading, okay? And then Finally, we can write a paragraph. Of course, we are going to learn as much uh, tags as possible. So uh, hey, paragraph is a P tag. So unafungua P tag like that, and then unafunga kwanza, make sure that you've closed the tag, and then come inside the P and say 
my first paragraph. Yes, simple. Then, so sir, how will we make sure that we are able to see the results of this? It's very simple. You make sure that you've saved it. So how do you save it? Either you can uh, control S in your keyboard or you can click on file, save us. File, save us. So mine I'm going to save here uh, just for, uh, for documenting purposes. So I'm going to save here and then I can say, uh, let's say code us like that. And then uh, I'm just creating a folder to save it. I've clicked on new folder and then selected and typed coders like that new folder and then it uh, like that. So uh, let me delete that. So uh, in the in the folder coders, uh, you open it and then this is exactly you have to be very keen in the way you are saving this file because it's it's very critical. It will determine how you're going to run this in your browser. So I'm going to call mine index dot html at least make sure that it's in lowercase and one word don't type for example joan space nabusoba dot html yes it will work but conventionally uh, having a, a website having a name that is has multiple words is really cumbersome especially when you're linking multiple pages together so it's good practice you name it as a single file, a, a single in a, I mean, you name it like that, as simple as possible. So I'll click save, and then you'll see the colors have changed because this uh, this editor is smart. It knows that you are working with a HTML document. So how do we run this? You can right click and then open in browser. You right click and then click open in browser. Of course, if it prompts you, it will open with the default one but uh, it can prompt you to select a browser like the way it has done for mine. And there you go, there you go. My, the first heading, my first paragraph, my first site at the top there indicating that that is the title, okay? So that's the simple way to begin with HTML. That's the simplest way to begin with HTML. Great. So other than that, we have, in case there is another way in which you can open the notes, uh, I mean the HTML, where you've saved your files. For example, mine have saved in HTML classes, coders. How do, for example, this is the file. How do you open it? First of all, your browser can be able to know that this is a HTML file, uh, uh, your computer. But if it doesn't, you can right click, ensure that you've selected it, right click, then open with, and then select the browser of your choice. For example, I want to open it with Google Chrome. I can just still click with Google Chrome and it, uh, it's taking some time to load. And then you can be able to see uh, that uh, it's, yeah, it has shown the results. Great. Wow. So any questions so far? I can see we have two minutes remaining. Let me stop sharing and then, uh, Oh, great. Any question up to that point? So Krista, you're asking which compiler is she using? <laughs> uh, okay. When you're learning about the web, of course, we, we don't use compilers. The web run in browsers. Compilers is when we're using a, a, a programming language. This one is a scripting language and uh, we are just working with the web. So uh, can you use the same format on the phone? No, 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 you can't code using your phone. You can't code using your phone. Then Angel is asking, where do I get the black blank screen? Mm, I don't know what you mean. The editor, the editor, you can just have a, uh, have a look at it. I've explained in the notes, I'm going to share with you the links of where you can get the editor and use that black screen. Then Aisha, what does the H1 stand for? Heading one, heading one, it stands for heading one. It's a tag that uh, in HTML to denote heading one. And then can you use your phone? No, Aisha, you can't use your phone, unfortunately. You can find, kindly try finding a comp somewhere or even a cyber cafe install uh, just Sublime, talk to that guy and install Sublime, 
and then you can be able to yeah to just work on it so um having said that i'm going to share with you the link to the whatsapp group we have a we have actually two because we know the numbers might exceed but uh let me just share with you the Uh, invite via link, just a minute, copy link. So make sure that you join ASAP, okay? Because the, uh, uh, yeah, so I uh, can see Galaxy A11, uh, you're saying, can you use any laptop? Yes, you can use any laptop, any laptop, any desktop, uh, as long as you, uh, it, it is really important to code with this. So uh, yeah, so we have uh, yes, it's true. Thank you for thank you for that information. Text editor and browser is really important for you to code, and then uh, please join the WhatsApp group if you can. Please join the WhatsApp group. That's where the fun happens. Actually, I've seen people. Uh, posting their screenshots and everything and we get really super excited so for non-whatsapp users we are going to send resources in the email thank you for that information harriet for yeah it's true we are going to share the resources on email dorcas oh yeah we will share the information on email then jade you're asking is there a way to stop hackers from hacking your website is there a page that you can create to dictate or uh, to detect, I mean, to detect hackers. Hmm. So hacking, what I can say is a whole topic in terms of uh, what we call in cybersecurity. And there are practices in which you can make your website secure. So uh, if you're using tools, especially if you're using a backend like a, a WordPress uh, or even this HTML, CSS, uh, you can prevent hackers by making sure that you implement security features. We are going to learn this as we go along. So yes, we are going to, you can, you can detect like uh, websites in, in web development, there are measures in which you can put to detect whether you have been hacked or not and things like that. So thank you for that amazing question. It's very important because we've seen websites going offline. You've created a website for a client, you've been paid and then what? it goes down and you have no idea. So that's a really important question uh, for you to ask. So I am super excited as well to have you in this session. We are going to share these resources on email and on password. Uh, you've asked about the recording. You've asked about uh, the link to W3 schools and also the link to download Sublime text. I'm going to share that with you and uh, feel free just make sure that you grab as much as you can as go along as you go along it is for free guys work on it and uh, uh, show the others that you don't need to have a lot to gain these skills okay so that's what what that is our mission at pony technogas to make sure that you guys get as much as possible out of this session so if you have a friend that you feel can join us let them know because uh, from next week it will be hard for someone to to uh, to join in in between because we'll have gone so we'll have done so much okay so just join in and make sure that you follow uh, you can welcome them uh, share with them the recording and then in the next session karibuni nyote kabisa let's do this great so um i'm going to end the session i hope you've you have joined the group let me share the link again i hope you've been able to join the whatsapp group and then a uh, uh, keep on uh, keep on working keep on coding we look forward to sharing more of what is expected of you in this program as we go along so i'm gonna stop there have an awesome uh, day ahead of you it was a pleasure to interact with you amazing ladies and gentlemen and uh, as you are part of the you are now officially part of the coders at american spaces program so see you as we continue interacting and have an awesome day ahead of you.